Welcome to the Angling Flaneurs. Today we're uh, at the western edges of the Regent's Canal and we're heading in the direction of uh, Little Venice and we're just above the Maida Hill Tunnel in Victoria Passage. Our aim is to finish at the uh, Trellick Tower, an old Goldfinger's masterpiece, which is a mile or so in a westerly direction. We'll be going past Little Venice and seeing the West Way. On our right hand side there are some very smart Regency buildings and very soon we'll be passing the house of Guy Gibson who was the leader of the Downbuster Raids. We're in the area of Lisson Grove and it's here in the mid 70s that Mick Jones and Paul Simlin first met Joe Strummer. I think they met at the Dole office here and uh, the first meetings were quite confrontational and uh, they went on to form The Clash. Arguably the greatest punk band ever. Very soon we'll be passing the Edgware Road, which was originally part of the Roman Watney Street, which now runs from Marble Arch to Barnet. We're now walking along the very smart uh, Maida Avenue. I remember this place as the location for the film Finding Your Feet from 2017, which included uh, great actors and actresses like Timmy Spall, Celia Emery, Jonah Lumley, David Heyman and Amelda Staunton. For a few minutes we'll stop and we'll just take in life along the canal.
To our left we see a plaque, a blue plaque, and this is where the actor Arthur Lowe lived, who uh, people might know as Captain Mannering in Dad's Army. I've spoken about the Regent's Canal in previous vlogs, but I'll do a, a brief recap. The Regent's Canal came into place from an act of parliament in 1812, and construction mostly took about five to 10 years. There has been further work at later periods along the canal. One of the first directors of the company to, uh, to run the canal was John Nash, the famous architect. The intention of the canal, which runs uh, from Limehouse, was to connect the Thames to the Grand Junction Canal, which had opened in 1801. The Grand Junction Canal ran all the way up to Birmingham and past the, uh, the circular network of canals around Birmingham, and then the uh, further canals which link up with the great northern cities of Manchester and Leeds. So this was a great way of connecting London and the River Thames to the Industrial North. On our walk here we can see some fine examples of the London plane tree which was widely planted in the 18th and 19th century which is a hybrid of the sycamore family and was planted and not only for its attractive qualities but its resistance to uh, high pollution levels. These trees not only in their name have become very much a symbol of London.
I don't know what the mooring costs of having a canal boat here are, but I would imagine they are uh, fairly expensive. It really must be one of the most desirable areas of London in which to moor your canal boat. Attractive buildings on the right hand side must be something to do with the canal, maybe a lock keeper's cottage. Very soon we'll be entering Little Venice and we'll be crossing the uh, famous Walk Avenue. Now spend some time looking back at the Maida Hill Tunnel. This must be one of the uh, most spectacular views of London. It certainly would be in my top 10. I know a lot of people don't like to have this list, but this certainly must be, um, I think, one of the great views of London. What do you think? We can now see Little Venice before us. Originally the area was known as Venice. And it's only in uh, the last hundred or so years that uh, it's been prefixed with Little, an area now known as Little Venice. The inspiration for the name originally came from uh, the poet Robert Browning, who remarked um, that the poet Byron had called this place Venice. Little Venice is the um, is, is the junction between uh, the Paddington Basin of the Grand Union Canal, the Grand Union Canal and the Regent's Canal. Very soon we'll be passing through Rembrandt Gardens and we'll be uh, uh, walking along the Paddington uh, arm of the uh, Grand Union, crossing the bridge and then walking along Little Venice.
Before us, we can see the wonderful Westway. The Westway is an outdoor carriageway section of the A40 Trunk Road and it runs from Paddington in the east to Kensington in the west and it connects the London Inner Ring Road to uh, the West London suburbs. The Westway was built as an extension of the Western Avenue to form a link to the Ringway 1 which was the innermost circuit of the London Ringways network. Joe Strummer of The Clash talked about their music as being the sound of the Westway. Many of the, the band members were brought up and raised very close to this area. And very soon you'll see um, the uh, the cover of the of the film, the documentary film of the Clash Westway to the World, by the very famous um, film producer Don Letts. Don is a renowned film uh, maker and uh, producer, and was a big friend of Mick Jones and Joe Strum of the Clash, and later with Mick Jones formed Big Audio Dynamite. In our last vlog uh, around Spitterfields, I talked about it as being my my symbol, my my favourite area of East London. If I had to talk about a similar area in West London, it would be the Westway. My fellow Anglian Flaneurs have a slightly different view of the Westway. Uh, my friend Cass, um, he really likes the Westway. My friend Steve, who has a problem with Stratford High Street, also has a problem with the Westway. He really hates it. There are now so many cultural references to the Westway. First of all, it's mentioned in J.G. Ballard's 1973 novel Crash, and the following year he wrote Concrete Island, and the um, book was set in a junction between motorways, one of which is in the Westway. In the book Concrete Island, one of the protagonists has an accident on the road while speeding and is stranded in waste ground between motorways with nobody else to help. The Westway became the dystopian setting of the, uh, of the novel. In 1997, the murder mystery of Certain Justice by P. Day James was set in an area being demolished for the Westway. Chris Pettis' 1979 road movie Radio On uh, includes several shots of uh, the Westway and I believe uh, several shots from the film Breaking Glass including Hazel O'Connor and Ray Winston were also set here. The Jam's 1977 album This Is The Modern World, uh, the cover for that was uh, a photo taken from under the Westway and also in 1993, Blur's song for tomorrow uh, mentions that the protagonist couple in the song are lost on the Westway. Blur also mention it in two other of their songs, Fool's Day and Under the Westway. I believe the rock band Hawkwind, which was Lenny Kilminster's original band, they also played their free benefit and charity concerts uh, underneath the motorway, underneath the Westway. And finally, the Westway is referenced in Pete Doherty's um, song Broken Love Song, in the line by the Westway inside the scraps. For all my eulogising about the Westway, uh, it should be noted that the construction this road had come, has come at a huge cost. Uh, in the early 70s it was estimated that 5,000 families lost their homes for each mile of the Westway constructed and it has uh, gained great criticism over the years. I think uh, the British Road Federation called the Westway one of the insensitive and socially unacceptable examples of motorways and Adam Ritchie criticised the Westway as saying it was the most inappropriate and negative use for the space could not be imagined.
Now let's deviate away from the, the grittiness of the best way and look at the Gen 2 or Vistas of Little Venice. The Waterside Calf is uh, often where the members of the Anglian Fenoris stop to have a lunch. They do a very good omelette and chips. We've now left Little Venice and we're walking along the Grand Union Canal in the direction of uh, Westbourne Grove. The area gets its name from the, the River Westbourne, which uh, flows into the Thames um, very close to Chelsea Bridge, but is really one of the lost rivers of London. I really discovered the, the Westbourne about 15 years ago um, on a walk and talk with Paul Tanning, who has uh, written books on the lost rivers of London and Derrick London. There's lots of people out there who are experts on the lost rivers of London. Uh, going back in time, I think, uh, at, this, at this moment. Um, there's people like Tom Bolton, who um, John Rogers is a big fan of. He has uh, written several books on the Lost Rivers of London. But um, the Anglian Flaneurs would tend to follow Bortani, big fans of his. And uh, his books are well worth a read, so I uh, would like to put in a plug for Paul here. And as you might have seen from previous vlogs, um, no video, no vlog from the Anglian Flaneurs is really complete without a furry cat scene. Um, Steve, who has a problem with Stratford High Street, is the famous cat whisperer of Surrey. So I really we had to include this uh, wonderful bit of footage. And uh, my wife is known as the mad cat woman of Ipswich, so uh, really that was uh, another reason for including this footage as well. We're now at the Church of St Mary Magdalene, which was completed in the 1860s and has been used in several film sets. Peter James's uh, A Taste for Death and also the 1968 movie Secret Ceremony with Elizabeth Taylor. And I also believe um, scenes were filmed here from the 2012 film of the Miserables. All miserables, or whatever uh, pronunciation uh, you would like to use, apologies for, uh, for my actual uh, pronunciation. 
Finally, the architect of this um, fine building was George Edmund Street. We're back along the Grand Union Canal and walking along we can see the, um, in the distance the view of Trade Tower which will form the, uh, the last part of, of this vlog. We'll go around the tower and surrounding grounds around it so you get uh, a really good view and we'll go over some of its history and as I said this will be the conclusion of our walk today. And of course, I'm including some sneaky footage of the West Way uh, where I can. We're just passing the Union Tavern, which is um, a fullest pub and well worth a visit.
to our left we will see the, um, the wonderful Meanwhile Gardens and Moroccan Garden. Some of this is the, um, the work of the um, Westway Trust and Renfrewable Organisation that have done some tremendous work over the last 40, 50 years helping to, uh, to improve the look of the area and uh, improve the quality of life for many of the local residents. There are also other local volunteer groups that have helped uh, make this area look very attractive and help um, develop the gardens. So I hope you enjoy them. So this area is not just about the Trellick Tower, just not about the, the magnificent canal that, that we all love, but uh, these gardens are really well worth a visit. A lot of people have put a lot of hours over the years in to help make them look the spectacle they are. So come and please appreciate the hard work that has been put in. I cannot speak highly enough of the energy, time and skill that has been used to develop this area. Now we're right by the famous Traffic Tower. Now the um, tower is a grade two listed building and it opened in 1972 having been commissioned by the GLC and was designed in the Brutally style by the architect Erno Goldfinger who obviously sounds like he's come out of a Bond movie. I believe Goldfinger had earlier had built the Balfour, or helped design the Balfour Tower I should say, in East London. I guess a bit like the Westway, it falls into that category of, uh, of a building, you love it or you loathe it. I doubt um, if you could be indifferent to it in, uh, in any way. Initially the building had a poor reputation. It became uh, a magnet for crime, vandalism, drug abuse and prostitution. The local residents really wanted to do something about this. Uh, the work of the Westway Trust as well, uh, residents associations in the 80s and 90s, uh, the place really had a, an upturn in fortunes. The building became Grade 2 listed in um, 1998, I believe. Also, in 2017, uh, the year of the Grenfell Tower tragedy, a fire also broke out um, in Trellick Tower, but the concrete structure meant that uh, damage was very limited. Grenfell Tower uh, is a mile or so from where we are at this moment. The gardens that we see here are, are really worth uh, exploring and visiting. And as a result, as I said earlier in the vlog, of the incredible hard work of the, uh, the Westway Trust and other local volunteer groups. The building itself is 98 metres high, uh, including the communication mast, and it has a long thin profile with a separate lift and service tower. The building has 217 uh, dwellings. In 1991, Sand Hessel, Professor of Architect at uh, RMIT, made a BBC documentary praising Trade Tower, and this helped change uh, people's perception of the place. Also, um, we're very close to um, Portobello Road and Notting Hill, and the gentrification of the area really helped make uh, helped make the flat much more desirable.
Naturally, the tower has been used for uh, for much filming over the years. It can be seen in the films Rick Nail and I, 1987, London Kills Me, Never Let Me Go, and Paddington, and also featured in the film for Queen and Country, starring Denzel Washington. Uh, the tower also has connections uh, with J.G. Ballard, another Ballard connection here. Uh, from the dystopian novel High Rise in 1975. And I believe uh, it was also featured in Martin Amos's black comedy uh, novel, London Fields, and was part of the um, BBC's footage for the 2012 uh, Olympics. And uh, not unsurprisingly, there's also another Blur reference, I think it was used in their, uh, their song Best Days. That's it from the Anglian Flinners. I hope you've enjoyed our, uh, our walk today, walking um, close to uh, to the Westway at uh, Little Venice, and then continuing our journey along the Grand Union Canal and ending up at the iconic Traffic Tower. Love it or loathe it, one thing for sure, it sure cannot be ignored. <laughs>